So welcome to Peplink's broadcasting webinar. We're gonna roll through, originally we scheduled about three different cases and uh, throughout the revision of the presentation, I believe we have five now, five different cases. So it's really interesting. And we'll go through every one. It's a stackable solution. When I say stackable, that means I can take the solution from the first case, I can apply it to the second case, I can scale it, I can apply it to the third case, I can scale that and et cetera. So that's pretty amazing. We're not talking about fixated uh, solutions that only applies to one specific case and is non-reusable. All of our Peplink solutions are basically building blocks in the SD-WAN or networking industry. You can take it apart, you can put it together, you can reconfigure it to meet the needs of your clients anytime, anywhere. So what is Peplink? If anybody asks you, what is Peplink? One, you never heard of it. Two, you have no idea what SD-WAN is. That's okay. We are the unbreakable connectivity company, period. We offer this solution anytime, 24-7, 365, anywhere in the world with whatever WAN is available. And I say that literally, any WAN. And when I go through all the cases, you will realize that everything I just said is absolutely true. So let's go into the first case to whet your appetite and see what we can do. So our first case is based on uninterrupted radio transmission. So when I'm talking about uninterrupted radio transmission, I'm not talking about studio base. I'm talking about 100% in the wild mobile. That means my studio crew and my partner can go to any site in the world and still broadcast back to their audience in near real time. Okay, so let's look at a case and what the case is about and what their challenges are. So my partner, Stefan Balmer, the audio and IT officer at 104.6 RTL radio in Germany, so for all my German friends, please tune into that and give Stefan some support. And our great partner, Vitel GmbH, also based in Germany, they were challenged with a solution to put together a huge outdoor concert. The concert is called Free for, uh, Stars for Free. If you're in Germany, you know this, it's an annual thing, 100% free. Look at that picture, you can see the amount of attendees. But what are the challenges to do a peer real-time broadcast back to the worldwide audience. First, one of the requirements was the best of quality with absolutely zero disturbance to the listener. The listener cannot discern that he is not even there. He believes, he or she believes they're physically present at the event with that type of quality. Two, they need the best possible real-time performance. When we talk about real-time, we're not talking about 10 minute, five minute, or even a one minute delay. The end user who is listening in must feel they are in sync in real-time with the rest of the audience live at that event. And it has to be easy to use because the people who are setting up these concerts are technically may not be networking uh, specialists. They are broadcast, they're uh, video uh, photographers, uh, they are, you know, AV and audio type people, okay? Not necessarily uh, peer IT networking, but our solution must be easy to use and must work every time. So I'm going to ask my uh, participants who are members of the Peplink family today, if you were developing the solution and you were brought to this case to develop another on-site project for audio concert, what would you recommend to be the solution? Okay, take a look at that picture. Think about the audio requirements, real time, best of quality, easy to use. Do you guys want some hints? Let's give you guys some hints. 
I'll give you one minute to think about it, and I want my existing members to key up what they recommend would be the solution, okay? So my audience, for my partners, what would you recommend? Hey, Christopher, Max on the go, possible. Did you guys spy some of the cool peplink gear hidden away in, in those pictures? Anybody else? Okay, let's jump into it, okay? So the solution that our partners, Vitell and Stefan put together were a group of devices. And we'll go through each one of why they chose it. So they chose a Balance 380, a Max HD4 MBX, and a Max HD2. They created Speed Fusion Tunnel with jitter and latency tuning. And they were able to implement a dedicated voice over IP between our virtual device fusion hub back to the HD4 for a direct on-site dial-in. And it took them from zero to three weeks to live deployment, including all configuration and all integration. So let's go through it. We started with a balanced 380 enterprise grade router at the main studio. We paired up twin DSL connections for a wide broadband connectivity solution, a fat pipe to download all the data that Stefan will put up. Next, Stefan has set up a primary radio transmission gig, HD4 MBX with quad. That's four multi LTE WANs as the primary uh, transmission device. But there's more. Stefan also set up a secondary studio with HD2. Now this can operate as a backup or as a secondary studio for live audio commentary. So you can imagine these two are live and enabled at any site. And how do we enable all this? Between the audio encoders from the musicians, from their instruments into the audio encoders, our wireless LTE solution will create a proprietary speed fusion tunnel with jitter and latency tuning. We would prioritize audio over all existing traffic back to headquarters. And in the cloud with our fusion hub, at the headquarters, they were able to create a direct dial-in voice over IP to the mobile studio. They literally, literally carry a phone with them and the studio can dial into Stefan or Stefan can dial back into the studio and do live audio dial-ins. You can tune that, uh, specify that to the crew directly for tuning, or you can actually have consumer call-ins to comment on the, during the, um, during the broadcast. 
And the reason we chose them, we picked out Stefan, was because he was the winner in our photo contest from January. And you can see his latest deployment right there. Now, this case we'll talk about in the future after Stefan uh, sets it up and uh, sends us the write-up. So obviously, this is in the Caribbean. But one of the things that he's done in this type of case scenario is that he's able to incorporate Atmos uh, microphones for ambient sounds to bring the environment back to the listener. Now, I want to also point out that Stepan's effort are fully paid off because not only was he the photo winner, he was also the first winner of our Balance 20X. And with the Balance 20X, he has set up a third mobile studio with a Yamaha QL1 digital audio mixer, radio microphones, and IEM as a third mobile studio. So as a reminder for our existing partners and possibly new end users, if you have deployed a really cool and kick-ass broadcasting solution or any network solution using Peplink Gear, why don't you send a uh, picture in and you can be eligible to win one of the many other devices that we're giving away every month. Now, I believe I talked to marketing earlier and I believe there were no submissions for March so far. Huge opportunity to win some free gear from Peplink based on your efforts. So are there any questions uh, regarding the first case with audio mixing? On the go. This is a 100% completely wireless solution. It's available everywhere. It offers massive bandwidth back up into the cloud and back to the studio. If you're asking me, what's the maximum bandwidth uh, MBX can uplink? Dan, do you know that? 2.5? 2 2.5? 2.5, 2.4 gigabits? Okay, well, what is the VPN encrypted bandwidth of the MBX? 5.6. Yeah, we're, did you hear that? We're pushing 500 up to 600 megabits of bandwidth. You can give every single musician their own personal audio track and master that audio back to the studio or into the cloud with our solution, fully encrypt into your own private data center. There are no subscription fees. There are no cloud overhead. There are no additional licensing fees. It's a one-time investment into your uh, solution, and you can reap the rewards on a daily basis based off that. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So what are the, let's summarize the technologies that enable this solution for Stefan that no other provider can. One, we offer a bandwidth bonding solution. We're able to take multiple LTE solutions in the field and combine it into a fat pipe, basically mobile broadband. Two, our WAN smoothing technology can help prioritize latency and packet duplication to offset any packet loss or any jitter, ensuring Stefan and his team a peer low latency experience for all their listeners. And of course, we encrypt that over a VPN solution for security. For your clients, our products are completely WAN agnostic. So what does WAN agnostic mean? It basically means that you could use any available WAN connection and create a virtualized, unbreakable, secured connection. And when I say any, I literally mean it. Our devices have multiple WAN ports over Ethernet. We have multiple LTE ports. We also have built-in Wi-Fi that can be used as both Wi-Fi as AP or Wi-Fi as WAN. And I'll talk about that in the next case. And we can guarantee uh, quality for your transmissions. WAN's moving enables you to have a perfectly consistent quality as good as fiber optic or land-based connectivity over wireless. You're also agile because you can pick and choose what's available per region. If you're going to a region where 3G is better, then we'll use multiple 3G. 
if you're going to a region where you have both uh, instant fiber optic and DSL, then you can plug that in. Or if you need 4G, you can have multiples of it or any hybrids of that. And in the near future, guess what? We are 5G ready. You just hot swap a module into our devices and you're 5G ready. Your investment is protected. I don't think you're gonna find another solution that can offer you all of that out of the box, except from Peplink. So let's talk about our next case. So one of the things that Stefan could have done was with all that massive broadband bandwidth was what? Add video, right? He could have been a, the next Michael Bay creating the next MTV. Well, let's look at a mobile video solution that requires that and what are their challenges? And let's see what the solution was. So our second case was marathon broadcasting by our friends, CYN, our certified distributor in Thailand. Now their case is pretty unique and uh, I really wanna emphasize this case a little bit because it's sports season, it's probably the biggest growth market for broadcasting, it's sports. If you're in Europe, the number one market is what? It's football. Oh, hi, Thal, you ask, can the BR1 Mini combine LTE and wireless? It can do load balancing between the two. The BR1 does not offer a bonding solution. But you can look at something like a Balance uh, 30 Pro that has a single LTE plus multiple WANs, and yes, that will allow bonding plus WANs moving. So let's go back to the marathon case. We have an outdoor marathon case out in the wild. It's 42 kilometers long. You have over 10,000 participants. You have nearly 10,000 to actually finish, and it starts in the middle of the night. So what are some of the challenges that you can envision right away? You are the technology partner, your local marathon or event coordinators asking for your help. What are some of the challenges? The number one thing is, wow, the long distance that you have to traverse and cover throughout the event. At minimum, at minimum, you have to travel 21 kilometers halfway assuming it's the same route back and forth, that's minimum. Number two, how are you going to monitor over 10,000 participants? Reality will say in sports broadcasting, you will not. You will more than likely track the top 10, top 20 participants because that's where the most interest is. Okay, number three, you're in an outdoor environment. You cannot guarantee the infrastructure is already available and you have to do a rapid deployment to get it up and running, plus, what happens after the event? How are you gonna manage the tear down? Can you imagine trying to pull fiber optic into the site and then tearing it all down right after for a two day event? It's insane. And fourth, how are you gonna manage real time, low latency, multicasting with commentating? You're gonna track the runners, or the participants, you also have to do, to do live cut-ins for the sports commentators, and you have to combine everything, back it up, and transmit that to all the viewers. So I'm gonna give you one minute for our existing partners to think of what would you advise as the ideal solution in such a use case. And I will give you some hints to see what it entails. So this is all live footage in real time from the actual event. You can see we have traveling monitoring, traveling video photographers, we have music cut in. And we have live commentating voice overlay in real time throughout the event, especially for the top guys. So what kind of solution, as our partners, would you advise your customers 
from Pentling to enable this solution. We're talking about multiple cameras. We're talking about live voice commentating, integrated. Everything's broadcast in near real time. We're talking about less than one minute, one minute latency between shooting that video, cutting it, integrating it, backing it up on a cloud, and broadcasting it. And remember, there's multiple cameras. There's no way you can achieve all this with a single camera crew. I hear Balance 20X from Christopher. Thal says, we're gonna use HD2. Do we have any more recommendations from our Peplink partners? No? Okay, let's take a look at the real world solution. So these were all the challenges. Multiple runners, different locations, seamless commentary integration, live multicast streaming near real time. It's actually a one day event. Think about the tear down and set up. And there you are completely infrastructure challenged. So our partner at CYN has put together an amazing solution. And it's, I thought it's pretty ingenious. Let's check it out. Boom. CYN was able to deliver a seamless integrated and multicast solution to the Bangasin Chonburi Marathon. They're using multiple cameramen with multiple drivers using a completely wireless video photographer solution plus on-site mobile media station tied to commentators plus video editing crew uploading all of that back to the cloud for backup and live transmission and multicasting to the audience. In this specific scenario, our team used Speed Fusion Engine wireless 4G LTE with video encoders integrated into the backpacks of the video photographers. We use a Max HD4 at the mobile command center to capture that video, cut in live commentary audio, and then push everything back up into the cloud and into the cloud-based streaming service. The winning factors, ultra compact size with super low power consumption based 100% on batteries. Speed Fusion Engine combines twin high speed cellular connections, HD4, super broadband support with four active cellulars that can rotate between up to eight different SIM cards for flawless and the best of connectivity at any time during the event. But let's take a deeper look at this solution. So Thal, you did a really great job. HD2 was very, very close uh, to what they actually use. So our video photographers were riding on um, with mobile drivers on mopeds. They were able to track the top 10 runners throughout the event. Each moped had a dedicated video photographer sitting on it and filming live, okay? Basically streaming off twin cellular connectivity solution from Peplink. They would pipe the video stream from the camera into an encoder and would pass through the Speed Fusion engine. Speed Fusion engine creates a broadband VPN back to the HD4 located at a command center for minimized latency. So basically it's gonna to bounce to the cell tower from cell tower back down literally in the same location, roughly. The live video feeds are then combined at the command center at the same time, the commentators are watching a live video feed that's decoded into small portable screens. And then the audio is muxed into the upstream. It's sent back into a second encoder up to the server's data center and then broadcasted live. So the HD4 uploads video stream back to the data center live. And let's look at how it's done. 
There you go. Over here, we can see the Speed Fusion engine, the built-in antennas with 2x2 MIMO connection. That's the video encoder that's tied directly to the cameras they were using at that time. This is the battery pack that supplies all the power. This is a 100% wireless solution. The only tether, the only tether is that cable between the camera and the encoder. That's it, there are no other wires in this. At the mobile command center, we see the HD4. All the yellow wires are the IP input. So the HD4 is pulling down the video from multiple HD2s. It feeds the video feed back into these decoders. These are Teradek decoders at 1080p. You can read that screen right there. These are fed into multiple screens live at the mobile command center where the commentators are choosing and switching between A, B, C, and D uh, video photographers and making commentary. They could choose the top runner or the top crew or the most exciting. They could also radio ahead to the driver and say, hey, I want you to pull back and then shoot somebody. And then when the video stream comes online, they could cut back in. Then the blue wire shows the video encoder sending the upstream fully mocks back to the cloud for backup and then broadcast it to everybody. Now, I wanna ask you something because this will be asked uh, for our new users. Okay, what kind of performance are we looking at? So Dan, can you tell me what is the max upload bandwidth for the Speed Fusion engine per video stream? Should be 100. Okay, and if we have to encrypt that under VPN? Uh, should be 40, if I'm not wrong. That is correct. 40 megabits per video stream. So let me ask my broadcasting viewers who know more than I do, what is the average megabits per video stream that you need to ensure at minimum a 1080p stream in H.264 encoding? Can somebody tell me? Okay, I'll give you three seconds to answer because I know it off the top of my head, I did my research. If SRT, you need 20 to 25 megabits. Okay, eight. Okay, for most of our stuff, six megabits. Okay, none of you are wrong. None of you are wrong. If I was encoding in raw, in raw, it would be about 20 to 25 megabits per stream. And Dan just said that, it, that SFE, Speed Fusion Engine, pushes 40 megabits each. That means I have plenty of bandwidth to push a raw stream master video from every single one of my cameras, plus audio. If you're doing H.264 encoding live, you're gonna pull between eight to 12 megabits. If you're doing HEVC, H2, H.265, you're between four to six megabits. So remember, we're pushing at minimum, at, at these are 264 video streams as far as I know, at minimum, we're pushing four by eight megabyte, megabits. So that's what, 36 megabits in total, not including any latency, lost packet, or jitter. I'm gonna ask you, do you know of any other solution out in the market that can guarantee you that? I don't know. Okay, I know there are a lot of bonding solutions, but I know they're not gonna be able to push that kind of throughput. And then imagine you're at the mobile command center, you're real time muxing in commentating and music and commercials and et cetera in real time. And you need to back up that master video back to the cloud. You're gonna push at minimum 36 to 40 megabits uplink plus audio and et cetera. That's why our guys at CYN place a HD4 at the mobile command center. And then, just for our audience, what is the max VPN encrypted bandwidth the HD4 can push uplink? HD4, is it 100? I'm wrong. It's 100. 100. It's 100 megabits. I just told you for this video stream at H.264 that we needed a minimum of 36 
megabits for master video. And we can push 100. That means we can actually double the number of videographers, or we can actually quadruple the number of video to video to photographers if we use a better encoder in H.265 with audio. So for my broadcast specialist, was I wrong in any of my numbers? Would that be an ideal or worthwhile solution for you to have? I'm going to tell you right now, today, 10, uh, 1080p is the minimum. What, what about in the future if you're trying to shoot 4K master video? What is the minimum bandwidth for that? Or what if in the future you are shooting 8K master video, but you're doing 4K broadcasting? Okay, I don't know anybody that shoots 4K and, and then uh, displays 4K because there will be artifacts. You got to clean it up. But usually you shoot at a higher resolution than what you need as the master video for future editing. And then you broadcast at a slightly lower resolution based on you know, the needs of the consumers. Yep. So Everest, you said 4K video needs a minimum of 15 megabits. So our solution today from CYN can transmit 4K master video as is, zero upgrade, with low latency, fully encrypted under a 256-bit security cipher that nobody can steal from you. But what is more important for video broadcasters? All the data goes to your nominated data center or headquarters. There are no third party solution that will hijack your video, that will have access to it. It's all 100% protected to the destination of your choice. Plus, did I mention then, do we charge any subscription fees? Zero. Zero. What is the end, what are the annual fees after you buy a device from Peplink? Warranty. Okay, besides the hardware warranty, are there any outstanding licensing fees that our... Zero. Oh, he, he cut me off, he said zero. There are zero licensing fees. There are zero uh, feature fees. There are zero subscription fees. You pay for the solution. You determine the host or the backup data center you want. All the data is yours. It's fully encrypted. You shoot it. You save it, you broadcast it, you own it. Hey, Thal, if you're shooting 4K at 50 megabits, it's megabits, it's not megabytes, that's eight times. That's 50 megabytes is uh, 400 megabits. Okay, if you really need that kind of solution, hey, no problem, you know, maybe you're shooting raw or maybe you have the 8K camera you actually don't know. Uh, I have the solution for you, Thal. Okay, we'll jump into that in a little bit. Okay, let's go into the next case. Okay, let's take a little quick deep dive into the Speed Fusion engine just to make an introduction, and then we're going to keep escalating and go through, uh, go all the way up to our powerhouse uh, broadcasting solutions. So this is the Speed Fusion engine. It is literally the size of a small mobile phone. It is in fact smaller than my mobile phone. And I will tell you my screen is seven inches in diameter. Okay, it's a small little box, has twin LTE cellular solution. You can see it has dual SIM cards right there in front of you. It's 100% powered by battery or direct DC input. There's a three-quarter side view, fully plug and play. Remember, when you buy a PipLink solution, we take care of you with a fully managed uh, service through IC2. That's our integrated SD-WAN controller, fully in the cloud. You can log in anytime from any device, PC, Mac, tablet, mobile devices. You can log into your device, check the status, set the access, tune up, tune down the bandwidth requirements, and et cetera. Now I wanna talk about the, what if you needed a solution that's outdoor ready? You don't have a backpack. 
you want to mount it somewhere, such as I want to put it on my scooter, Dan, or I want to put it on my vehicle. What would you recommend? Um, something with IP rating. Yeah. What if we wanted a outdoor solution, but we have to be aware of the environment? Sea water, salt water, rain, wind. IP67, 68. Okay. IP55 so, is a minimum. Yeah. IP55 is a minimum. IP67. So we do have an outdoor solution with the same performance. So let's take a look at that. That's a beautiful little box if I ever seen one. This is our IP67 version of technically the Speed Fusion engine. It's an HD2 mounted into an IP67 super rugged durable case for a harsh environment. And how would you use this in broadcasting? Well, based on my marathon solution, not every country have access to scooters or is not allowed or even motorcycles. A lot of people would have uh, camera crews based on vans or cars or any other type of vehicles, but they also don't have the space to mount it inside. They would like to put it outside. So this is an ideal system and let's see how we can use it in a real world situation. So let's take a quick intro into the box. It's a dual cellular. It has redundant SIMs. That means it has a maximum of four SIMs, two active, two on standby, and it'll rotate between the four based on quality. Again, I mentioned Super Duty IP67 enclosure, shock proof, vibration proof, harsh weather proof, mother nature approved. Speed fusion bonding when smoothing, seamless failover, all the VPN goodness that I just talked about. Optional PoE input. You can literally just plug a single PoE cable into it and power it up. No cable mess. And how would you use it? So Dan, I think you know more about this case than I do. Do you want to introduce us to these guys? Well, this is like a mobile center of sorts, but for uh, much more uh, heavy lifting applications. They were initially they were shooting just the live use, but it overlapped into into further projects. Mm -hmm. And was this only from JVC based in where? Uh, I think it started in Mexico, uh, then explored into Latin America and, and then globally. Okay, wow, well, globally. So JVC came to us looking for an IP broadcasting solution. And they wanted something outdoor environment friendly. So you can see uh, they didn't have access to cool scooters like we have in Asia here. Uh, they had to make deal of a SUV, you know, oh, how terrible. So they wanted any live broadcast where camera mobility and high reliability are paramount. They would do live encoding in the field, but they needed low latency. And this is how their solution was. And it's a little bit different from CYNs, so let's take a look at it. They would use JVC professional cameras with a bridge camera adapter. They would mount our harsh environment HD2 IP67 bonding router onto the rooftop. They would add high gain LTE antennas for broadband transmission back to the cloud, back up and live stream backhauls. And they would have a VPN router at the facility that's either data center or headquarters utilizing a balanced 380. And they would handle up to 20 different cellular links incoming. But let's take a deeper dive into their solution and see how they set that up. Oops. So, Professional cameras with built-in IP encoders. So this one's a more elegant solution. The encoders are already in the camera. There's no external box. That's one last box. It would capture the video, encode it, and then it would send it over a Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz bridge. The, the bridge would send the video back to the Wi-Fi input mounted on top of the car. Right there. 
and they're using an external 5 gigahertz specialized uh, harsh weather antenna. Then the Wi-Fi would transmit that IP encoded video stream back into our HD4. Excuse me, HD2. We do have HD4 variation. The HD2 with the high gain cellular antenna creates a bonded aggregated signal from multiple carriers, two active, two on standby, back to their private data center, 100% fully encrypted, 100% fully privatized. At the studio, JVC would receive this data stream via our Balance 380. At the same time, they are able to receive up to 20 different live camera crew transmissions worldwide. That's a pretty scalable solution. Again, let's go back to math questions. If you're shooting a single HD stream, a one HD stream per camera, let's say it's eight megabits, and you have 20 different worldwide crews in operation simultaneously, what is the bandwidth requirement that you need? That's eight times 20 megabits minimum. That's 160 megabits of throughput. VPN, fully private and encrypt. So we can offer you that type of solution today. Or if you need to scale out, we can go even further. So in this situation, this was a IP camera to a Wi-Fi bridge to LTE back to Balance 380. Uh, optionally, you can technically put a Fusion Hub virtual device in the cloud somewhere here, and you can simultaneously send the signal to the cloud and then back down as a backup. So you can have off-site storage of all your master video and audio automatically. You don't even have to worry about it. You just do the cutting and pasting and um, broadcasting from the studio by pulling the raw feed off the cloud and editing it before you send out to your consumers. Oops. So what if you wanted a more elegant solution, Dan? Okay, I don't want that Wi-Fi box. I want to minimize, I want to minimize the number of points of failure. What can we do? We would probably need to embed it somewhere closer to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I already gave it away, so we're laughing. But yes. So, so did JVC come to you after this project and say, hey, we want a more elegant solution that's embedded in the camera with one less box? Yeah, on top of that, they wanted a robustness so that there are no antennas and it's enough ruggedized for the cameraman to be 24-7 in action. And this is how we came up with the next device. So basically JVC came to Dan and said, I want to get rid of this antenna, this box, and these four antennas off the car, and I want to integrate that into a simple box solution. Is that correct, Dan? Yes, yes, so good. Okay. So guess what? Would it be cool if we have this kind of solution for our partners? Audience, what do you think? If we can take all these antennas and this box and we somehow create a single box and simplify it, would that be a very cool solution for you to have? Able to broadcast 4K raw video live back to your data center? with minimal input. So let's take a look at that. Introducing Speed Fusion Cam. This is our brand new dual cellular bonding solution for professional IP cameras. And it comes with two different compatibility mounts. We have the gold, the gold or AV mount. We have a V mount. It's universal for most of the professional class IP cameras out there with built-in encoders. 
we have built-in redundant sims. There's four if you count it, one, two, three, four. We have additional WAN and LAN. And we have an additional Wi-Fi port that can access that can act as an AP or Wi-Fi as WAN. And we have input and on and off switch. Now, how does it look when we mount it to the camera? There it is. We completely took the solution that was previously mounted on the JVC car, and we made it into this little box. Small, simple, elegant. We allow a piggyback mount to put the camera battery. So now we have a 100% wireless solution integrated into the camera for up to 40 megabits of encrypted throughput, live video streaming, no wire mess, 100% portable. But Dan, what if like Thal says he wants more bandwidth? He says the HD2 is not enough. He wants a little bit more than 40 megabits. What can we do for him? We have Wi the new X series. Wi-Fi as WAN. That we can offer. Uh, you can also use Wi-Fi as WAN for this particular solution and combine multiple speed fusion cams. So did you hear that? What if you needed more power in the field and one speed fusion engine or speed fusion engine cam is not enough per camera. You can set the built-in AP as Wi-Fi as WAN and add wireless WANs to it through a second speed fusion engine or speed fusion engine cam or even mobile phone that you may have. It will combine all the additional WANs you can give it to increase the bandwidth in the field, 100% completely wireless. I really don't know of any other solution that offers that amount of flexibility or WAN agility in the field. So this is how you would set it up. First, you mount a Speed Fusion Engine Cam onto a camera and you enable the VPN and you broadcast back directly to the data center using bonded bandwidth, which in ensures consistent and reliable connectivity. Within the Speed Fusion connection, our algorithms will monitor the traffic and work with the bandwidth available to ensure a smooth error and jitter-free connection with no packet loss. At the data center, the balanced router would pull down the video feed and forward it to the media server for decoding and post-processing. Remember, if you insert a virtual fusion hub uh, into step three, you can technically do live simultaneous backup of your master video without you even touching it. And the Speed Fusion Engine CAM includes a Wi-Fi radio, which can act as both an AP or Wi-Fi WAN port for additional bandwidth as needed in the field. And here we were demonstrating this at last year's NAV show. You can see this gentleman is playing with the camera. You can see the relative size of that, the relative scale. It is fairly small. There are no wires, no tether. He's pushing 40 megabits of 4K bandwidth up here. This was live streaming right here, back here. If you attend the next NAP show, you can see our team uh, demonstrating this through our partnerships. If you are a new member of PepLink or a non-member of PepLink, you can reach out to any of our partners and ask for a demo today. This is openly available and I will tell you right now, it is 100% certified to work with JVC IP cameras today. If you are using a different brand of camera, we welcome to work with you uh, to certify our system for those cameras. Just reach out to us at sales at peplate.com and we'll pass you, pass your contact directly to the regional partner.
But there's more. There's more that we can do. Now, outside of sports broadcasting and live concert viewing, what else can we do with our system? Let's take a quick look. So if you need more bandwidth, we do offer our 4K and 8K solution. This is the HD4 MBX Quad Cellular Gigabit LTE Mobile Powerhouse. This is the device. It comes with a triple WAN port, eight LAN ports, two USB that can be enabled as USB in for WAN or out of band management, has four built-in LTE and Wi-Fi. That's a lot of WAN ports. That's three plus two plus four plus two. Is that right, Dan? On the Wi-Fi, we can have two separate WAN ports Correct. on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz? Correct. Okay, that's like nine, I think, if my math is not wrong or more. This is also hot swappable. In the future, if you make an investment in this platform, you can upgrade it to 5G when it becomes available in your region. Okay, this pushes 2.5 gigabits of raw throughput. But what is the encrypted performance through the MBX, Dan? Uh, unencrypted is two and a half of the router, and uh, encrypted is 500 meg maximum. Okay, 500 megabits. So 500 megabits. So I'm going to go back to so. You said 4K was 50 megabytes, which was 400 megabits. I think you're talking about 8K raw, un uh, unencoded or uh, raw video feed. Yeah, the MBS will push it and more. Okay, I believe a 4K video master stream is about 20 megabits. So you're pushing 500 megabits, you're gonna push 25 4K master video streams through this box uplink. Imagine if you're doing a sp sports broadcasting uh, session and you needed that kind of solution to watch the next World Cup or something like that, or Formula One. You need 4K master video or even 8K master video. This is the box to help you do it. And let's talk about a real world use case where somebody actually did that. So last year in the US, we were working with the US ski team they traveled the world, especially in the Nordic countries, uh, competing in ski events. They needed a solution one that was shooting a high quality master video. They would broadcast that video back to their headquarters before they would do cutting and editing for consumer viewing. They also needed some form of live streaming uh, to cut in. They also needed to provide broadband connectivity for the ski team in between their runs. So we use the HD4 MBX as their solution. We tested this with them. They mounted in a travel trailer that traveled across multiple countries in North America, Europe, et cetera. And the trailer acted as a central broadcasting hub to all the partners for the US ski team. As far as I know, I believe other news crews use that as an uplink. So what were the winning factors? High throughput. 500 megabits fully encrypted. If you need a little bit more bandwidth and you're not so sensitive about encryption, you can push up to 2.5 gig, up to. Supports worldwide band frequencies. It's future-proof, it's easy to upgrade. And more importantly, it's super durable. You can imagine the ski team traveling to minus 30 degrees Celsius weather for their competitions. The MBX has proven itself in that harsh weather through and through. And you can see it right there. So let's look at their deployment, how they did it. MBX installed inside their wax truck. Multiple SIM cards with world plans are embedded and it provides a local Wi-Fi connectivity for all the crew and uh, news members and live camera feeds if need be through bridging. The MBX aggregates up to four cellular links into a high-speed unbreakable 
resilient and secure SD-WAN connection into the internet. And it operates with uninterrupted access to weather databases and changing information on the events. You can do event live streaming. You just connect that camera either via Wi-Fi or you can connect it via one of our Speed Fusion Engine cam solutions, create a VPN with a very low latency connection back to the HD4 MBX. Remember, you can augment all of this with Wi-Fi uh, in between if it's available. If it's not available, you can Wi-Fi as WAN into mobile phones for emergency use if need be. And our built-in speed fusion technology has packet compensation, uh, packet loss, and jitter-free uh, jitter uh, minimization to help ensure the stream is high quality and smooth on the receiving end. So no matter how the quality is during the transport of any of the four different cellular connections, we will take all of them, find the best of, and use that connection to ensure a total free, smooth video stream up back to the data center and the headquarters. Now, there are other use cases besides sports streaming. What about live, new cast, uh, live newscasting? Okay, so what are the difference between live uh, sports casting and live news casting? In sports casting, the event is fixated in a location. There is a limit to where the boundaries of that event will be. Okay, it's designated. So you can plan ahead, you know, from one end of the field to the other end or one end of the track to the other track. What if you're chasing real time weather news? Okay, what would some of the challenges be? So in this use case in the United States, our friends at WCYB TV, they had built a new storm tracker vehicle that goes out to shoot weather in uh, live video in bad weather. But some of their challenges were that in their previous technology base, they were using microwave. And what are some of the caveats of microwave? They had to set up the uplink before they shot the video if they wanted to do live. Okay, one, there's a setup time. Number two, what if the weather condition changes and moved? You have to tear it down, pack it up, go to a new location, set it up, then shut filming. Technically, you're losing time. Also, the weather has a lot of cameras uh, mounted, so technically, they almost cannot shoot a lot of live video as they're driving down and trying to capture it because microwave is directional, okay? It is not 360 omnidirectional, kind of. But anyway, so you have to set it up. There's a lot of downtime. So what would you do for my partners? What kind of solution would you offer to our partners as a mobile solution that is real-time instant and they could shoot at sight and at will for a live TV camera crew. What would you recommend to that partner? I'll give you 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's take a look at the solution that they used. They tore down their previous microwave uh, solution and they used a quad cellular HD4 routing solution. It allows multiple WAN inputs and multiple IP feeds. They can fully stream while in motion. That means cameras out tracking the storms or the tornadoes. As soon as they're shooting, they are encoding, they are upstreaming. It's easily mounted into any production vehicle, such as their trucks, production vans, and weather vehicle. It is easy to use for their operators as well because they basically flip it on and all the settings are enabled. And it provides a broadband internet uplink available to all reporters as well, so they can type up scripts and set up recaps back to the news stations for follow-up 
news broadcasting. So they can one, do live transmission at site as it happens, and two, they can clarify and edit the news briefing for follow-up. We will start with the HD4 mounted in the vehicle. The cameras would take their HD SDI video stream, it would go to an encoder, and then it goes directly through an Ethernet port into the HD4. IP video is transmitted under a secure broadband connection, fully encrypted across four LTE. This is sent back to their headquarters. At the studio, the video is converted back to HD SDI through the decoder. Then the reporters and the TV news team can pull down the video in near real time and start editing the video for subsequent transmissions. Or they can do a pass through live into a uh, previously set up weather template for live streaming. This, with multiple LTE connection, it guarantees one resiliency. Just in case any single LTE goes down, they are still transmitting. Two, they utilize all the available broadband bandwidth to ensure they get that video up there as rapidly as possible. Three, the aggregated bandwidth allows them to shoot high quality video stream where in the past, they will have to trade down to a lower quality because of physical limitations in technology. Today, you can scale up, as Dan said, up to 500 megabits of raw video stream fully encrypted. Hey, Caesar, your question is, can the HD4 pass SRT protocol streams? And that's a very good question. We'll check and get back to you on that. Uh, as far as I know, uh, I actually don't know that specific answer. But uh, what we do is, as long as the video stream was initially IP, we encrypt it as is, and we shoot it across, and then the decoder would decode the SRT stream. It's the same thing in our solutions for uh, enterprise. We take proprietary MPLS solutions that have their own technology, and we just do a pass-through. So we treat it as a big win. But I want to emphasize the router is not the only solution. Now, 50% of the time uh, when our partners are shooting or transmitting IP in the wild, they may say, well, I'm not getting enough bandwidth. It is not the fault of the device. It may be a limitation or competition from the cell towers due to all the users in the area. That's why. So how can you supplement that? we recommend that you look at antennas. So the built-in antennas uh, in every single Peplink product are between 2.5 to 3 dBi gain already. So what if you're traveling? What if you're going to a far remote place? What if you're mobile? You cannot guarantee the sustained cellular quality from that cell tower or the range, right? So any of my RF engineers out there, can you verify that? Can you sustain consistent uh, radio signal quality if you're moving around? A yes or no? Okay, well, I'll tell you. And previously, all my RF engineers have told me no. So how do you augment that? What you can do is use our new high DBI antenna to augment that. So let me introduce the ANT-107. This is our 6DBI 4x4 MIMO high gain antenna for LTE. It has a wide band of frequency between 698 to 3800 megahertz. It comes with four LTE SMA connectors. So if you were using our dual cellular device, all you need is one antenna. Every cellular device from CAT12 and down has two connectors for antenna. This antenna has four. So one of these antenna, which are IP67 proof, can improve your radio signal gain up to, what is it, two to the six power? Is that 256? No, that's... 26 dBi. 
226 DVI, 226. 226 DVI, maximum is 26 DVI. Okay. So we can improve your radio gain uh, with our antenna. Now, if you're using CAT18 modems uh, devices, then you will need a minimum one of these antenna per device. But what are you buying? You're buying consistency of quality and radio gain when you're moving around. So for TV news broadcasting, what if you're trying to track down weather storms, lightning, thunder, tornadoes? Can my RF engineers out there tell me, does lightning, rain, and harsh weather affect radio signals? The answer is actually yes, it can. So if you're in that type of environment or you're looking to go into that environment and you need to shoot live video and you want to guarantee the highest quality available to you and you're competing with everybody else using their cell phones, taking videos and streaming it to social media, you should look at adding and augmenting your existing solution with a high-speed antenna. This is available now from our partners with any Pep Lake solution. Okay, it's also available at an incredible deal today. Uh, can we talk about the MSRP price on public? Let's wait for the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will let you know, my partners, I will share with you a little advance notice. Please ask us what the cost is. My end users, please ask me, what is the cost? Okay, don't be afraid to challenge us. Let's make a deal. Now I wanna uh, finish off with what can we do today? All those cases that I talked about were from previous. And when I say previous was between a couple of years ago up to last year and the beginning of this year. But at Pepling, we are a dynamic company. We're constantly developing. So what do we have new in the pipeline? So we previously, I believe January, February, we just recently this quarter announced a brand new SDX. It's our modular enterprise grade router. And why am I recommending this for our broadcasting partners? One, you saw a lot of our partners use a Balance 380. The Balance 380 can support back then 20 video streams at 1080p. What is the upcoming standard? It's going to be 4K for master video at minimum. More than ideal, if you're doing hardcore broadcasting or filming, you're looking at 8K. When you're looking at higher video resolution, you need more bandwidth. You need a more powerful box to help you push that kind of broadband. So the SDX is our brand new enterprise grade. It has two WAN ports, two USB ports. These are WAN incoming. You can have a USB out of band management. Two SFP, giga ether ports. There's the WAN, oh, excuse me, that was console port. Eight LAN ports and upgradable module. The upgradable module allows you to expand on your investment without losing it. You don't throw the boxes away. You just make a nominal, upgrade in the future and you keep, you don't change your network whatsoever. Here's the rundown of what you can do uh, with this box. It's also a slim 1U configuration. This is nearly perfect uh, for those environments where it's very tight and you're tight on space. You could put this in your data center headquarters. You can literally put this in your mobile command center if need be. Okay, but what kind of modules do I have? Well, how do you benefit a mobile uh, broadcast solution? Let's take a look at the modules. Today, we offer a triple LTEA module. That's three LTEA module with a GPS. You can use that as your wireless broadband right there. You can also expand to eight giga ether PoE module. This is when our LAN enabled. It's up to you. Or you can switch over here to a quad SFP plus port module if you have uh, for corporate use more than likely. But uh, the exciting thing about the SDX is that we will make available 5G modules in the future. 
So your device and your investment today is protected through our expandable module line and has the horsepower to push your video needs. Lastly, and this is one of the things that our partners always ask us, especially the new end users. I really like your devices, Anthony. Dan, you did a really great job on that Speed Fusion Engine cam. I pop it on my IP camera, I'm completely wireless, but, but, yeah, there's this but. I have to set up the endpoint. You are correct. You really do need to set up a secondary endpoint to enable the VPN, the WAN moving, and the bonding. But I don't want to hassle with that. I just want to buy a box. I just want to plug it into my camera. I want to start shooting, and I want all that speed fusion benefit. Can you help me? Well, Dan heard your call. So did marketing. Yes, we can. Coming soon this year in 2020, Pepling and through our partners will offer you a subscription model base endpoint. You don't set it up yourself. You invest in our initial devices that are 5G ready with Speed Fusion. We will provide a fully set up Speed Fusion, excuse me, Fusion Hub in the cloud that will allow you to connect to for a fee. Now, this is just to get you going until you get familiarized. In the future, you can do a rolling uh, expansion of your network to put in private boxes in your cloud, in your data center, at your headquarters, or spin up your own Speed Fusion enabled Fusion Hub. But we offer a pay-as-you-go service with our upcoming Speed Fusion Cloud technology. We will offer everything as a service. You will get access to our SD-WAN controller. You could spin up uh, multiple sizes of the Fusion Hub, depending on the number of peers and devices you need. We will offer something brand new called Fusion SIM that's 100% SIMless cellular service, where we send you a SIM ID from our service to your device. So you can literally just pick up the box, turn it on, and pick a service from one of the services provided by our partners or Pebble and go online. Or of course, you can do everything manual and have your own private uh, network, do your own sourcing. If you have any more questions, you can also contact us at our website or you can go to our social media channels. You can visit our forums and talk to our partners, ask them technical questions, commercial questions, business questions. You can talk to our marketing team and on their wish list. You can visit us at LinkedIn, or you can drop by and say hi on our Facebook page. We're completely open and accessible to all of our partners and end users. If you have any questions today that we did not answer, please send uh, emails directly to Dan and myself at sales at peplic.com. We will be more than happy to read them, including any other concerns, especially business cases. If you have a marketing question, you need some kind of brochure, aid, uh, other presentations or data sheets for you to read and understand our solutions, please send an email to marketing at peplic.com. And last but not least, at the end of the presentation, we have linked multiple case studies with other solutions that I don't have time to talk about today. I'm just gonna run through it really quickly just to preview it to you. This will be all available to you as a download at the end of this presentation with a link back to this live video broadcast. So now if you have any questions, that I didn't answer, you can queue it up into the chat and I'll answer all your questions live for the next 10 minutes.
if you scroll back to the contacts. The previous. Hello, Mohammed. Thank you for that comment. I want to share with everybody uh, who joined late. I just realized some of the users may have joined late. If you have joined late, previously I mentioned in the first case that Stefan uh, had uh, sh was showcased in our webinar because he actually won through our picture contest. For all my existing users and partners, if you have a really cool deployment, please take a really cool picture and send it to us. What will you win? You technically will win free hardware from Peplink that we will email, uh, we will not email, we will send to you per month. It's a monthly contest. We have zero uh, submissions, I believe, for March. So get going. If you have any cases where you're looking to spin up or deploy a broadcast solution and you need our assistance, please reach out to us at sales at peplink.com. More than happy to talk to you and go through your solutions uh, before you present to your end users. My new end users, if you're excited and you're intrigued about this, please send me a line at sales at peplink.com. More than happy to talk about your existing uh, challenges, how to solve it with you and show you uh, what we can do as our partnership. And at the end of this presentation, we will email everything to you guys. Uh, one of my requests is that there will be a feedback form. We work based off your feedback, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, what we could have talked about more during the presentation, and et cetera. So please advise your feedback, how we can do better for you for a future webinar. Thank you, everybody. It's been my pleasure talking to you. You have been a great audience. Let me give you a round of applause. And I look forward to talking to you again at the next webinar. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, there are some questions that uh, I see in the Q&A box, so I'm just going to quickly run through it for whoever's still here. Hi, Mohammed. Yes, we will share the presentation with everybody via email. Um, when you get the email link, there will be a feedback form with links to the presentation and the video for your future use. So one of the questions from Roy was, isn't LTE a challenge at a concert with that many people there connecting from the LTE tower? Okay, so I want to say yes. If you are at a concert and there are 10,000 people hammering that LTE uh, tower, you're going to get a little bit of bandwidth. So I will share with you, uh, for Stefan's case, it was an audio transmission. That was number one. So in audio, you don't really need a lot of megabits to have a very high quality. What do you need at, during an audio concert? You need redundancy. That means the live transmission from the audio team cannot drop. Is that correct? I think that's more important. That's probably the number one thing. You cannot drop that connection. So having multiple LTE plus, you're also able to pull in landlines as available into the max HD for MBX. Remember, MBX has three WAN, two USB, Wi-Fi as WAN on two channels plus four LTE. So that's a lot. Uh, Theo, you said multiple camera teams on motorbikes with transits or other dual cellular transmission. Hey, Theo, for your question specifically, they were using speed fusion engines with encoders per motorcycle team. Uh, Theo, Robin, can this be used in a multi-cam environment on site? Six cameras and multi-cam edit over IP. Yes, you can. 
In CYN's case in Thailand for that marathon, they had four or more. Remember, they had four on mobile motorbikes plus live on the ground camera crew at the start and at checkpoints and at the end. So those were stationary cameras plus the mobile command center where they were filming the celebrity commentators. So you can imagine how many camera crews they had live. Hermie, you said, what about in control virtual hosted product in the future? Hermie, for your question for a private in control, please email the sales team at peplink.com. It is technically feasible depending on your use case. For Dave Evans, yes. So to be, your question was, so to be clear, we have to have a Peplink solution at each end or Fusion Hub in the cloud. Correct, you need a point-to-point -point solution at minimum. And I will tell you right now, every Peplink purchase device hardware includes one free Fusion Hub solo that allows one peer for you to test. It has unlimited bandwidth, only limited by your hopes. But if you need to aggregate multiple Peplink devices into a single cloud or a single data center, then you will need a hardware device or a Fusion Hub license with multiple peers. Mohammed, what about a location where very weak LTE? I think no LTE coverage. What are some of the solutions? Mohammed, very incredible question. I told you earlier, our, all of our devices are multi-WAN agnostic. Whatever WAN connection you have, like literally whatever, 3G, 4G, 5G, microwave, satellite, point-to-point uh, -point, uh, systems, DSL, fiber optic, whatever you have, then you can bond it and create an active connection. What you should do is send an email to sales at peplink.com and we can review your case and we can work with you over the technical uh, difficulties you might have in very remote locations. Okay, I think that's all the questions that I see. Okay, thank you again, everybody. I really appreciate you for sticking around and we're going uh, 20 minutes over time. Thank you again. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar.